Hi guys, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I'm going to share a studio tour with you today under protest. I created this thing because a lot of people have wanted me to do one, but I generally have some issues with studio tours and craft room tours, and that is that they make us jealous. They make us think that we need more supplies because we get jealous about what other people have. They make us think we need a bigger space or a nicer space or a more well-lit space. And they also make us think we need to organize the daylights out of the stuff we have and buy all kinds of special bins to put it in. And honestly, all three of those are going to stifle your creativity. If you sit and think you're less of a, an artisan or craftsperson because you don't have every color of cardstock out there and you can't make full rainbow out of yours, then you're going to hamper yourself by looking at what you don't have and not looking at what you do have. If you're worried that you work on the corner of a dining room table instead of a beautiful vast space with white counters and sunlight streaming in from outside, I think you're shooting yourself in the foot because I see a lot of people who work in a teeny tiny space and they create amazing work in that space. And if you think you have to organize everything and every supply has to be in rainbow order before you can make a thing, you're never going to make anything. Those craft rooms that are all beautiful and perfect, that is the art. They've spent a lot of money on the supplies that are in that craft room and they aren't crafting nearly as much as those who are making very good use out of their small space. And if my video or anybody else's studio tour makes you feel like less of a crafter or an artisan because you don't have what they have, then click close. Don't click dislike, just click close and go into your workspace and show that two-headed green monster that's risen up. Go show him that you can make something amazing with what you have. Are you ready for the studio tour? Buckle up, let's go. My studio is formerly two bedrooms, so I took a wall out between them so I could combine space. I needed more room for Operation Right Home when I ran that charity, and I needed to be able to do a lot of crafting because I did craft videos for that as well. So I, on one side, put in a studio section where I have this U-shaped desk. The other side has flat desk across it, but it's also another work and storage space that you'll see in a bit. But I like having kitchen cabinets. They're very deep drawers. They're really sturdy and nothing's going to wiggle around. So as I'm shooting video or that kind of thing, I don't have a table that jiggles. And that has been really nice because that's not what I used to have. This little unit came from Costco. And on top of it, I keep my die cutter because I don't use it very much. So it stays way over there. This little bin has all of my projects in it that I'm working on or upcoming stuff. The little yellow cup has stamps that have lost their homes and need to go back into the right stamp pockets. These are all water-based markers and pens of all sorts and just all different kinds of stuff. I've got my easel and underneath of it is my Daniel Smith watercolors in four different palettes and keep that all handy to use. And next up is my main workspace. And here is where I do most of it. I keep this Fiskars mat down. I don't really use it for anything other than uh, to tell myself not to fill this space with stuff. So I have room to work. And I have two lights. These are LED lights, so they don't heat up my room, which is great. And they're also on dimmers. So they're called marriage saver lights, I think. Got them at the lighting store. And then I've just got a bunch of random things that I keep on the desk. Hand lotion, Purell for washing things off and cleaning things, baby wipes, water. The little yellow container for my brushes is actually a toothbrush holder, but it was yellow, so I got it. <laughs> I, I'm not rocket science about getting just the right containers for everything. Got my pencil sharpener and my larger trimmer that are always out on the counter. And in the corner back there, I've got two trimmers standing on their side. So I've got smaller ones at, at the ready. Uh, hardboards for taping all of my watercolor paper down to. And then along the back is a piece of crown molding from the hardware store that I nailed to the wall so I could balance my hydrous watercolors on it. I needed a place to store them and that worked pretty well. 
the whiteboard on the wall above me has these cups that I got from Office Depot that have magnetic on the back, so I could have some storage up and off the desk. This little guy came from Ikea like 25 years ago. A lot of my Ikea stuff came from ages ago, and I just keep things like my foam blending tools in there, that sort of thing. I've got a couple cups with random stuff in them. And then my plastic bins from the dollar store are for my embossing powders, white and clear. And then the tins are my distress inks. This is my light box and I balance a light on top of it. That's also one of my filming lights, so you'll see it move later. And I put cardstock in there, just plain old colored cardstock to back up my cards and do it either horizontally or vertically. This is more stuff from Ikea from ages ago, and it's got all these slots in it, so I keep pre-trimmed card bases and card fronts and card stock of all kinds. I've got envelopes in there. And then my full sheets of card stock were from a sale at a store that went out of business. I bought a bunch of it. My Copic markers stay in their black case. And then here's my Bibles all uh, right there and handy. The Costco unit. Now this has these little drawers that pull out and I've got two of them dedicated to my current stamp sets. The ones that I use on a regular and ongoing basis. I keep them divided by company and my dividers are really simple. A piece of old cardstock with a label from one of the packaging just taped to it with scotch tape. I'm not fancy here. I use the Ellen Hudson stamp pockets because I find they hold up. The other ones tear very rapidly and I end up going through them. And I also use the magnetic sheets when I use them with dyes. And this is my small dye and stencil collection. I don't have very many. And apparently I have a very messy drawer there. These are my Our Daily Bread Design scripture stamps that I'm saving in the cases, in these CD cases, because I think it'll be easier when I teach at my church for them to use those than the stamp pockets. And then the other drawers just have random junk in them. This little drawer is so tiny, I just keep rollers in it, and underneath of it is some of my watercolor paper. I'm not going to even show you the entire collection. It's embarrassing. This drawer is random stuff, all different kinds of random things. This one is all Copic related, except for the craft assistant. It's one of my craft mat type things that I use. And coloring books, airbrush stuff in the bottom, whatever, random things. Acrylic paints and mixed media stuff in the bottom of the next set of drawers. This one is Misty's Bible journaling and embellishments. And then in the top is inks of all sorts and stamping blocks and that sort of thing. These are the top three drawers that I can reach real easily. And I keep all my most used stuff in those. So my ATG, my bone folder, my adhesive, those are all at the ready, high up, so I don't have to bend over a lot because I'm very lazy. The next set of drawers underneath that section have watercolors on the right and watercolors and watercolor powders. And then on the left is a bunch of punches. And in the very bottom is a lot of inks and sprays and daubers. And on the right hand side, it's all pencils, watercolor pencils, regular pencils. I even see some crayons in there. And then I've got this little Lazy Susan that's filled with my Nina cardstock. Yes, I hoard Nina cardstock. I fully admit that. I love this stuff. And then it also has some other random things in it as well. I've got this little unit that I brought in here because I needed more space to put stuff. So sketchbooks on top. I apparently have a, a problem with buying sketchbooks and then envelopes in the rest of that. This little container I bought back when I was in college. This is a long time ago. I bought it for my pencils and I decided to put my Daniel Smith paints in it. So that is how long I've been with Daniel Smith. That was 1980-something. That's We're just going to leave it at 1980-something. How about that? This is the other side of the room that used to be the Operation Right Home side. I used to sort cards on those shelves in the top. I have my devotions chair, and I sit there and do some of my video, video editing. I have a basket for completed cards and then a box for ones that are already addressed. And then the shelves are just filled with things people have sent me in the mail, cards and beautiful things. And there's Sierra's ashes and her favorite little toy. So I keep all the things I love up here. And this is my Blue Yeti mic. If you're looking for a mic for doing voiceovers, that one's great. And this is my Copic bag for students. So I have student markers in addition to my regular markers. And these are all student supplies in these drawers. 
Uh, Tim Holtz donated a bunch of the inks and things, but the rest of the stuff is what I've bought. So if you've ever gone to a class and thought, oh, no one will notice if I go home with a water brush, those things belong to the teachers. So all of this stuff in these drawers are things that I've purchased. So please be kind to your teachers at your LSS because those supplies are theirs. Now you may wonder what I do with all these cards. Well, I send them out on a regular basis. This is just one stack that I'm doing. I send cards a couple times a year to my patrons and then I do random cards to uh, commenters or to customers on, a, on an ongoing basis all the time. So I send out lots of cards. Now here's just a couple of views. I figured while I was just doing a few things for the next following couple of days, I would just show you what the regular process looks like. That was just doing some, I was working on some Easter cards at the time, just coloring with pencils. And here's me doing a Periscope broadcast. So I was doing some painting in a coloring book. And I had out my Daniel Smith watercolors. That stand is listed on my favorite products page, along with all of my other favorite products. I do expect a new one that I've ordered to come in. And if that one surpasses this one, because it looks like it's going to be more stable, then I'll be linking to that one in the future. But I'm waiting for it to arrive. But for now, this one works. And then here's me in my jammies. I do a lot of late night uh, jammy work in my studio because that seems to be my best time to just sit and relax. It's usually after I've gotten my Bible journaling done and then I just, I was painting with brusho this night. I was just enjoying the process of putting color on and seeing what would happen. This was another late night recently when I was working on card kits. I had all my misties out because there's one of my classes that has all hand stamped pieces for all the students. And there's probably going to be 125 to 150 students. So that's 125 or 150 times six that I'll need to stamp. So I have I leave them set up in my misties so I can just kind of go do a few and then come back to it and go do a few and come back. Now, other people are always asking what my setup looks like for video. And this is what it looks like. Um, I take two lights. I have two of these canned lights. And one balances on a Kleenex box on the left, and the other balances on the little little uh, IKEA unit and my my paper trimmer on the right hand side. I mean, this is so embarrassing that it's not fancier than this, but it is what it is. My camera is on a stand. The stand itself is supposed to be for lighting. You're supposed to put a light on the top of it, but I found an elbow arm thing from Manfrotto is the name of the company. And it has a couple different elbows. So you can kind of manipulate the angles and do different things with it. And I kind of found the, the knob that would fit on the end of it. So I kind of cobbled this thing together when I went to the camera store. And that way I can set up the camera at different angles and different heights and that sort of thing to be able to make videos and then shoot them underneath of that. There's a little monitor so I can watch what's going on on the camera while I'm shooting to make sure that I'm on camera, which as if you watch my videos, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen. But anyway, this is about the end of the tour. I hope you've enjoyed this and that it's answered some of the questions that you've had about my workspace. I want to end this with one of my favorite little things in my studio. It's a little print by Alechka Designs, and I will link you to her store in the doobly-doo down below. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. And if you would like to subscribe and get more actual creative videos from me, rather than just studio tours, please feel free to click that button. There's a couple of my favorite videos linked there for you as well. And more information on, is always over on the blog. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a great week. Take care. Thanks for stopping by. <music>